Georgia loses 28-10 to 10 to the Ole Miss Rebels. Probably one of the worst games that Georgia's played in a while, probably since the 2020 season. Just completely outplayed. There was really no question who the better team was tonight, and it was not Georgia. I mean, with the exception of a very short field at the start of the game, Georgia's offense didn't score a touchdown. So there's a lot of problems right now, uh, offensively for sure. The biggest thing I would say is the run game just doesn't exist. And – you know, I asked Carson about this after the game, and I just don't know how you can function as an offense when you're running for 59 yards. And this is not a first-time thing. I mean, Carson was 20 or 31 with an interception. That's that's fine. That's not. I mean, you know, it, they gotta run the ball. If they're not gonna run the ball, then they're not gonna win. And this this loss puts them in perilous situation now i mean there's no certainty even if they went out that they go to play for the national championship that that's the part that uh go excuse me into the 12 team playoff um these guys aren't playing like a national championship team right now and they haven't for some time but, you know <clears throat> their odds you know fell just now in the national championship <laughs> they're still fourth best so i don't know i mean it just you know you cannot play like that and win. And I think too much is being asked of Carson Beck right now. Um, the guy can't do everything. He said he was trying to, you know, create in the pocket with his legs a little bit. He did some. I mean, but they just got out. They got totally out coached. I mean, I never thought I would see Lane Kiffin out coach Kirby Smart, but he did tonight. And, you know, they had almost 400 yards of offense on this, which is not the end of the world. When you, you you can't win, this is on the offense. That's just all there is to it. 250 yards, you don't even have 250 yards. Now, you know, I was concerned that this was a game Georgia could lose. I mean, Ole Miss played really well. They only had 30 yards and penalties. That's a that's a that's 60 yards fewer than they usually have. They had one turnover, which Georgia made them pay. Um, it just they played really well on this. Now, they kicked a lot of field goals, so that's kind of problematic. And I don't know, I'll, I'll kind of, as I ramble here, kind of take a look at what everybody else has got left um, as time goes on. You know, Georgia at this stage has a really good opportunity with Tennessee coming into, into town, excuse me. If they don't win that game, you know, you better get your, your, uh, your, uh, your, your trip to Orlando ready because Georgia's not making the playoff if they lose three games. Not 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 like this. And again, you know, it's just not a great situation right now, uh, globally speaking. Because if you uh, if if you, I, I thought they would have trouble with this game from the start. I talked about it at the beginning of the week. I wrote about it. Um, I, I thought this was a game they certainly could lose, and they did. And you look at Ole Miss; they still have. I mean, these are very winnable games. They play Florida, who looked awful today. Uh, but they play them in the swamp, so there's that. And then the Mississippi – this is the best I've seen Ole Miss play, though, I have to say. I mean, uh, the, this game and the Carolina game. And now you just have, like, you know, Texas could – Texas, in theory, could run the table. Um, all they've got left is Arkansas, Kentucky, but they got to go to A&M. Um, it's a Clemson one today, so that win keeps paying off for Georgia, the win over Texas. We don't know what's going to happen with Alabama LSU right now, but, I mean, whoever wins that game, you know, I don't see a loss after this for them. LSU's got to go to Florida, who is not good, and then they host Vanderbilt and they play Oklahoma. I mean, Georgia today, you also, in theory, I don't think this really will help, but you get the opportunity to play Tech now, who has a win over Miami. It's very possible that Boise State will get a bye into the top four because the ACC is so weak. Um, but now you, you know, I think, I think, I think Clemson and Pitt now are sort of still in this thing in the ACC. I mean, Clemson's got one ACC loss, but it's not to Miami. It's not to Pitt. And it's, you know, they, they just took a loss to Louisville. So we, if this is this coming down the stretch, this thing is going to be wild, you know, and Kirby, I got some of the quotes from Kirby, um, you know, he said we couldn't get a turnover, we couldn't get a sack, we couldn't get a momentum play. They did get a turnover um, at the beginning of the game. That was a momentum play. They scored a touchdown, and it looked like Georgia was really in a good position. It looked like Ole Miss was going to do what they always do, which is puff and puff and then fall apart in November, and that didn't happen today. I mean, I'm telling you, man, like, I, like there's no 
they whipped Georgia's ass. This game was not close. They didn't put Georgia away, but they did whip their ass. I mean, 400 yards to 250, that's not, like, that's not 130. Ole Miss wasn't running the ball, and then then they did. So, it's just a bad, it's a bad, bad, bad loss for Georgia. Just a bad loss. Again, you know, this was as, as you know, Arian Smith catches a ball and just, like, falls down quickly. I didn't th- – there's – the playmakers seem to be regressing or something. Like, there's no down-the-field threat, and you've got Arian Smith on your team. Um, the run game is non-existent. Trevor Etienne's getting half the carries of Nate Frazier suddenly. Um, when it's not working in the run game, nothing else is going to work. Nothing else is going to work. And, you know, they should beat Tennessee. I'll say that right now. They should. But, I don't. you know, there's no certainty of that. I mean, Tennessee – um, Tennessee is more than capable of beating Georgia. Georgia will probably be like a five or six point favorite in that game. That's not a lot. That's not a lot at all. I mean, these guys have not played. The thing about it is maybe they have played to their potential, and this is all it is. That's possible too. And I don't mean that in like a disrespectful way. Uh, the defense is very good. But, you know, when you score 10 points, you can't expect to win. When they scored 10 points tonight. Like, that's bad. That was that's just bad football. And and that's that's where they're at. I mean, Tate Ratlitz is obviously not all the way back. Um, you know, and, and here's a quote from Kirby said before the season started that it was gonna be the toughest schedule we've ever had. We knew it was gonna be really tough. And then, you know, there's no reason to jump off bridges, but if you wanted to see what Penn State looks like in December you may get your opportunity now. I mean, the, them hosting a game, I mean, you're going to get the four teams that get in. So whoever wins the SEC, which I could talk and report to you that the SEC office is nervous. They they have a bunch of teams that are going to have two losses as of tonight, Ole Miss. You could have Tennessee, Georgia, Ole Miss, Alabama, or LSU with two losses. You, and and you, I don't know how you determine a champion. Like I, like, I think Georgia's out of the SEC championship, but I'm not sure. This, this is how wild it is. But, um, like, whoever wins the conference and then whoever the runner-up is, and then you got to stack people. Like, the runner-up would probably be the five or the six seed. The seventh seed is probably going to be Notre Dame. So that leaves one team to host, and they'd host the nine. So then you've got the 10-11 the and the 10 and 11, um, you know, they're going to go on the road. Those will be legitimate teams, the Georgias, Ole Misses of the world. And then whoever the 12 is could be the ACC champion. It could be Boise State. I mean, you know, you could see you could see a scenario where Georgia's the 11 and they have to play at Ohio State or they're the 11 and they have to play at Austin or in Austin. I mean, this was a bad loss for a lot of reasons. You win this game, you're you're in. Like, it wouldn't have mattered what happened against Tennessee. It just it wouldn't have. But now, well, I say that, I don't know. But pretty much, you know, you would have a lot of wins. But, like, here's the thing. <laughs> Next week, you have this opportunity at your place. And, you know, do you play better? I mean, they're not playing well right now, man. I mean, offensively, uh, these last two games have just not been good. Um, there were no turnovers. There were no catastrophic turnovers from Carson Beck tonight. That kid's doing all he can do. They've got to run the ball some. And if they don't, they're not going to win. Right now, you cannot really say, oh, I expect them to be in the semifinals. How, under what rationale? I mean, like, because they really played well against Texas and, and beat Clemson Skull in or, you know, whatever. They're not a consistent offensive team. And when you don't do that, you know, you leave the door open to lose games. Now, they're not consistent running the ball. They throw it plenty. I mean, Car- again, Carson tonight was – Carson had 11 incompletions, one of which was an interception. I don't remember what happened with the interception, but it was not a pick six or something like that. So um, – but only 186 yards. They don't go – he gets sacked five times. They're not protect- – the offensive line is not getting it done, period. And they know it. I mean, you could see – um, you can see. All right, let me say this about the f- field storming. It's dangerous, man. We don't, we don't need it. And I know everybody gets their jollies off, and that's great and everything. They're having to work on these field goal posts already right here. 
it really, you know, I, the field storming is extremely dangerous for the other team. And, you know, people were coming after the Georgia players, um, just some dipshit assholes. Like, man, if you wanted to confront Xavier Truss or Carson Beck or Malachi Starks to their face, they would end your night. And you, But you got a camera and you feel like you're safe so you can do whatever you want to do. I mean, you know, you're just a turd, an entitled little uh, punk at that moment, you know, running onto the field where you don't belong. And um, you're just ask, you're literally asking for trouble. And, and that, that is going to happen one of these days. Someone's, those kids should not be on the field. I, I didn't see anything. I didn't see any reaction. But Georgia had the opportunity to get their people off the field. Um, a lot of times that, that's not what happens, you know, but so Georgia's offense was off the field and Tar Carson would have been the number one, um, target. And he was, I'm like, look at, look at, the, I, I think I can put it on the screen. Yeah, I can like, watch this. Like they're trying to keep the, the kids away from the, keep the kids. And here comes this cop who, I mean, I'm, I'm not even hating on the cop, man. I mean, he's like, look, get to the other side. But then here, here comes uh, more Georgia kids. Here's Jalen Walker. Here comes Dan Jackson. And then in a second here, you see some little punk. I'll have to find it. Like getting in guys' faces. It's like, uh, what in the world are you doing or thinking? But when, it, it, when you get mob rule, you get mob rule. And that's – that's what we saw tonight. I should probably just let it play and just, you know, y'all can see it. No, here we go. Here he is. Look at this. Look at this little guy. He's got an Alabama shirt on. Hey, bro, what is wrong with you, man? Look at this little guy right here. You. Yeah. Th this guy right here. Yes, you right here, my friend. We're going to make you famous. You didn't think you were going to be famous. You're famous tonight. We're going to make you famous. Look at you. You're grabbing your, you're grabbing yourself. You're you're taking you're talking you're talking to Warren Brinson. Look at yourself, my friend. This is you. You're at an Ole Miss football game talking to the Georgia players. As an Alabama fan, you didn't say anything to Zier. Probably probably smartly. Hey man, listen, you're just a punk. That's all you are, my friend. You're just an entitled punk with a cell phone. You got nothing. You got nothing on these guys. You look like an asshole. That's what you look like because you are one. Who acts like that? Just storm the field. You're, it's not even your school. You have an Alabama shirt on. What's wrong with you? But hey, man. Hey, we're gonna take. You know, we're gonna just get out there and hope somebody. You got. I got something to say. I'm gonna be TikTok famous. Everybody's not like that. I get it. But that's why these things are dangerous. And, you know, if one of the Georgia kids loses their temper, like we've seen with so many kids at other schools, then it's the kids who are playing a football game and have worked all week for it. And then we got some little guy coming. Little guy. He wasn't a big guy. He was just some guy. He could have, he, he, that kid could have really gotten hurt. That kid really could have gotten hurt. But, you know, I, I just, like, he is – He's tall. He's screaming at C.J. Allen. What is he? Why are you so stupid? But we are, and this is what we do. Here's C.J. Allen. He's got a camera, oh, what, three feet from him, right in his face. He's grabbing his chest about Alabama at an Ole Miss game, and he's in Starks' face. You see what Georgia's having to do? Look at this guy. What's wrong with you, man? How does this how does this matter that much to you? It's strange to me, man. Like, is your life okay? Is your are you cool? Man, it's God is I mean, I don't know if these guys are boys or not, but everybody else is out here partying too. We got I mean, look at the Georgia people having to take these kids out. This guy, this little kid here is 10. He's got something to say. And it's strictly, I mean, he said that made his night. And then this idiot, right, look at the little kid here. But he's a, he's a, he's a six-year-old kid or something. 
I mean, I just I was really disappointed by that. And for all the all the romantification of Ole Miss, there was a lot of stuff said tonight that's not real genteel. Okay, like you see they're having to fight through the kids. I mean, it's just it's just stupid. And it's it's just gotten stupid that we have um that we've gotten this point in our tribal society on these games that the kids really do have to be worried about their safety. And, you know, I, I was on the field for the game, obviously. And, um, you know, you're sitting there and the kids jump down on, like the cops aren't doing anything, which, you know, I, I kind of get it. But I don't know. I was happy for Ole Miss to have a night like this. You know, Georgia doesn't store in the field. They've done it once in their history. And so, I, you know, when, when Ole Miss gets a big win like this, this is what they do. And, you know, I understand globally speaking, but – it's not a good look, and it's dangerous for the people storming the field. And the and the the ever, all most of the people on the field at that point are twenty one and under, and it's dangerous for every single person on that field that's twenty one and under. If Jalen Walker loses his temper because somebody has something to say, which he shouldn't lose his temper, but those people should never be on the field behind me. Period. And there was uh, I, I'll say it. I almost really did not do a good job with security today. It was a joke. And um, I don't think that would have prevented what happened. And I, I don't know what the cops are supposed to do but um, in that moment. But um, it, it, was, it was a bad look for Ole Miss, I got to say. It was a great – they played great on the field. And uh, Jackson Dart really – you know, Jackson had a really good night. He went uh, – he ran the ball for 50 yards. It was very impressive. He went uh, 18 of 28 for almost four. It wasn't all – it was not all Jackson Dart. Jackson Dart was 13 of 22 for 200 yards. Simmons was 5 of 6 for 64, led them on a touchdown drive to back up. I don't know what happened to Jackson Dart at the beginning of the game. Look, he got knocked out almost. But, you know, look, it was a really, 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 really bad loss for Georgia. And, you know, I, I think we got a long way to go before we talk seriously about these guys hoisting a trophy because it just doesn't look like that. It doesn't feel like that to me um, because they're not consistent in running the football. And if you can't run the football, you're you're not going to beat teams that are that are good. So I just I don't I don't buy it uh, right now. But they have a huge opportunity. I mean, it would really be a big failure not to get to the playoff. A twelve game playoff, a twelve team playoff. Excuse me, eleven game, twelve team uh, playoff. That would be total failure from Kirby Smart. I mean, I mean, I don't mean that in like a disrespectful way or anything, but it would be failure. I mean, look, come on, let's be let's be honest here. So. I don't expect them to lose to uh, uh, Tennessee, but Tennessee can beat them. And uh, we'll just see what happens that night. It's going to be one of the most uh, nerve-wracking games. I mean, Kirby's talked about in the past he doesn't like to be backed into a corner. I don't blame them, but they are now for sure. And they, they are in do-or-die mode, which Ole Miss was tonight and Alabama and, Tennessee and LSU are tonight. And probably Tennessee will be Saturday night well as well. I'm not completely sold they are. Um, you know, you got to win over Alabama, but it get, it's, it's just this round robin. You know, Georgia played at Ole Miss. They played at Alabama. They played at Texas. I mean, that is a really difficult schedule. I mean, Oregon and Ohio State are not going to combine to play three games like that, probably. I and mean, even if you – I mean, you got the Oregon-Ohio State game. If you count that one for each of them, that's two. I mean – I don't. I think Ohio State hosts Indiana, but I'm not sure. But combined, that would be three games like Georgia's experience. They had the Clemson game as well. Georgia's battle tested, but boy, they didn't show it tonight. They've got to get the run game. Um, you know, you want to hate Mike Bobo, that's fine. I, I, you know, but you know, it's time. It's past time. You know, they're missing these running backs that are out. They're missing the offensive line is not at all where it needs to be. I don't know what in the world is happening there, but it's not working. And, um, you know, it's on Kirby at the end of the day. It's just, it's up to him to, uh, you know, to get this right. That's what the $13 million is for. That's what the adoration is for. That's what the uh, uh, – that's what his sort of – the pedestal that he's earned and is on. That's that's what all that's for. And he, I think he knows that. It's none of my business what he knows or doesn't know. But uh, definitely, you know, this is an important week at Georgia. And it's a must-win game. Thanks for watching.